What's well, up everyone, it's Matt Morozik, and this will be uh, the first video in a series of unboxing and review of my second ever 3D printer. So uh, I purchased my first 3D printer almost about a year and a half ago with my buddy Floyd Bazin. We purchased uh, the uh, Frozen Transform, a large format 3D printer, and I, I'd never done any 3D printing before. I've never done any FDM or resin. Everyone that told I told that I was starting out with a huge, large format resin printer thought I was crazy. Like you need to learn FDM first. I'm like FDM doesn't do what I wanted to do. Um, I don't want to deal with all the prep and stuff. So I just dove right in, got the big printer, and I was lucky. Um, my printer worked right out of the box. I never done any printing, and I was printing like I plugged it in. I started printing right away. So there was quite a bit of a learning curve. I had to learn about all the different support settings and everything. And there's a great support community out there for 3D printing. There's one for the Anycubic Photon Mono X, which this is. And I just joined that group a little while ago. There's a support group for the Froton, or for the Frozen uh, Transform, which I belong to also. So both groups are great for answering any questions if you're, if you're having trouble uh, printing or getting failures or anything like that. Like I said, this is the second 3D printer ever. This is partially sponsored by Anycubic uh, any cubic, they asked me to do a review of this, and like, I would love to. So, uh, and I've been looking for a mid-size printer anyway, and of course, there's a toss-up between the uh, Frozen 4K Mighty, the uh, Elegoo Saturn, or the Any Cubic uh, Photon Mono X. And when they asked me to review this, and they would partially sponsor it, I'm like, I'll go with that one. <laughs> so, uh, let's open this up. This came in today, and um, what I'll do is I'm just gonna do like a little unboxing here, and show the packaging. And then what I'll probably do is um, I'll, I'm sure I'll put the, the specs on screen or probably do a voiceover. I don't know. Uh, so it comes in this brown cord, cardboard box. All the other videos I've seen in this printer, the packing has been very good. There hasn't been any issues. Um, so let's just get this out of here and we'll take a look at what we got. Okay, so here's everything that comes in the box. Uh, so I'll tell you one thing, the packing was excellent. Great protection on everything, nice foam padding. Uh, I really like how they had all the bill plate and the vat in a foam block on top of the printer. Uh, great foam padding, the case, the top of the print, the, the cover isn't cracked or anything. I know it's been some uh, issues with some of the uh, some of the Saturns, the covers come cracked, but I think they fixed that now in the shipping. Uh, so let's go starting from the left to right. So we have the build platform right here with an angled top, pre-sanded bottom. There's a protective cover on there. I'm not gonna take it off yet. So we've got that. I'll go over um, the specs and everything a little bit later. Right now I just wanna kinda get this unboxed and show you what you get. The vat, which I'm actually really excited about this vat because of two things. Um, it's got rubber feet on the bottom, which if you um, have a lot of the other printers, when you take the vat off the printer, you have nowhere to set it because there's no feet on the vat and you don't want to scratch your FEP if you can avoid it. Uh, like on my transform, I just have to set it down on a soft paper towel or, or soft towel when I take the vat out and I want to set it down because there's nothing to keep the vat from hitting the, the table. Also, it is aluminum or black metal. I'm assuming it's the aluminum. And we have a max line, which I really like. 
Uh, again, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to my transformer locks. It's the only experience I have as a 3D printer, so um, that's why I'm gonna keep using that as a reference because it's the only one I've ever used. My transformer does not have that. Um, I'm not sure how much this will hold. Uh, my guess would be it, it would hold 500 mils or 500 grams. The transform I can put a whole thousand gram bottle in the that no problem. Um, I can actually put a little bit more than that. Typically, what I do, and I'll probably do that on this depending on how it works. Um, is once the vat's all the way down and it starts to print, I actually pour more resin into to the very, very top of the vat. That way it just gives me more printing time. Now with this not having any holes in it, I don't know if that's such a good idea. On the transform, my build plate has holes in it. The original uh, build plate has holes in it. So as it lifts, the resin has somewhere to go. It goes through the holes and it doesn't have to go off the sides of the build platform. I think if I try to fill this up higher than the max line as the vat comes up, that resin may want to spill over the edge. So we'll see. Um, you get a really nice metal uh, scraper, which I never use the plastic one because I can never get my prints off with it. So you get a metal uh, scraper, a plastic. The only time I ever use the plastic is when I'm, if the resin has sit overnight or you know longer and in my vat, because typically I don't empty the vat after printing, I'll just leave it. Now if I'm gonna leave it for like a week or two, uh, then I'll empty it, but if it's for a couple of days, I just leave it, but I'll use the plastic to go in there and stir the resin up to, to get it all mixed again. Got some screws here. I'm not sure what those are for yet. We have uh, the USB stick, which will have our test file on it. And I believe the instructions are on here also. We have our Wi-Fi dongle. This has Wi-Fi capabilities, as does the Frozen Transform. Um, I, I'm not too sure about the capabilities of the Wi-Fi on this. Um, the Transform, um, basically, in, unless you just want to use the standard um, printer profile, resin profile, you have uh, you just use a USB stick, or you can use their web interface and do all your own custom stuff. Um, I'm not sure how this works on this. I know there's an app, but I haven't tried that yet, so I don't know. We got the two screws that hold down the vat. Um, this is actually kind of a nice design because, uh, again, on the transform, this the the threaded part is in the printer, so you got these two little nuts that hold the vat down, and those are easy to drop into the vat. I have not done that yet, but it's easy to do. I think this is a little easier where you have the big screw and it's just harder to drop into the into the resin. You get three Allen wrenches. We have a quality a QC uh, pass card. This is really nice. An after sales service card with some uh, QR QR codes on the back. So um, there's a QR code to the AnyCubic website, a QR code to the YouTube channel, and a QR code to their Facebook page. So that's a really nice touch. Got our power cord, our power adapter here. Uh, we have some rubber gloves, some filters, and they even give you a face mask. Uh, this is the paper you use for leveling your printer bed or for your uh, build plate. And then the kind of a quick guide uh, assembly instructions here. So we got some uh, instruction in English and then the other instructions. I'm going to assume it's Chinese. I don't know. I don't know how to recognize uh, Asian characters, so I'm assuming it's Chinese. But basically it's a quick, uh, quick guide on how to get going. So another thing I can comment is that this thing is robust. I mean, it's heavy. Um, it, it's, it's a solid machine. Um, again, just going back to my only experience with the, um, with the uh, Transform, I can tell you that this thing is nicely built. Uh, all metal case around the outside. I like the fact that the USB port is on the side, on the Transform, it's on the back. Power outlets on the side, this, uh, as, as well as the uh, power uh, adapter plug on the side. What's in the back is a real pain in the ass to get to. Uh, nice heavy printer, dual linear rails, um, solid Z rail, uh, Z access screw. Uh, looks like there's a protective film on here right now. I don't want to take it off. There's a little bit of dust on here. Um, so I'm kind of reluctant to put the vat on. And I don't have it, it's not zeroed out, but let's see if they'll go on there. Let's see. Yeah, that's nice. So the bag goes in there and it sits in those little, uh, those feet just sit down into the little recesses. Really nice. Um, so that's what you get. Now, I, like I said, I think there's instructions on the USB stick. Um, all the other reviews I've seen, they've, they've been a really nice manual uh, on how to print and everything like that. So what I'll do next is um, I have to make room in my printing area in my garage for this next to my transform. I'll set it up in there and uh, I'll give you some comparisons as far as the size go 
and all that stuff. Uh, the main difference for this for me is the reason I wanted a mid-sized printer uh, was for the resolution. This is a 4K uh, mono screen. Uh, my transform is a 4K RGB screen. RGB screens are supposed to last for four to 500 hours. I've been printing for 18 months uh, quite regularly on my transform and the screen has not gone bad. Uh, these screens are rated to last for a couple thousand hours. Um, also with it being a smaller screen, this is an 8.9 inch screen at 4K. Your uh, XY um, resolution is finer uh, as opposed to uh, the 11 or 13.3 inch on the transform. It's stretching, you know, when you, when you have 4K on a smaller screen, it's compressing the pixels so you have smaller, uh, finer resolution. On the transform, which is 13.3, it's stretching that out so you get um, the XY resolution isn't quite as good. Um, another reason why I was looking at the AnyCubic uh, Mono X before um, they reached out to me was because it has a slightly higher Z axis than the uh, Elegoo Mars by, I think, about two inches. So it's it's a significant amount when you're when you're printing. Um, most of the things that I print, which are prototypes and statues and things like that, it's rare that I go really really tall. Um, the one thing about the transform, which is really nice, is the fact that the bill plate is so large. I can put a lot of parts on that thing and uh, print a lot of pieces at one time. I can print fewer pieces on this, but I'll get higher resolution. It'll print faster. Um, and so that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the higher resolution and, and the print speed. So um, next time, uh, so I'll just continue this video. I'll get it set up in my print area, and then I'll go over some more of the specs of this compared to the Transform, again, since it's the only printer I've ever used. And then uh, maybe I'll do a separate video, a second video of actually doing some printing and stuff like that. But the first video is just basically unboxing, setting it up, kind of going over the specs, in my first impressions based on my experience in 3D printing for only 18 months or so. So uh, yeah, when we come back, we'll get it set up in the printing area in the garage. Okay, so I cleared a spot in my garage for this, but I figured since I'm kind of set up here the lights, I figured I'd show you the uh, bed leveling process on this. It's pretty straightforward. Just like on, uh, hold on one second. Just like on, all other 3D printers, um, you have a piece of paper you use to kind of do the spacing. So we're going to follow the instructions here. So I've got it plugged in. Uh, we're going to unpack, remove all accessories to that, plug in the power switch, and turn on the power switch. So let's turn it on. And we are greeted by the nice Photon logo there. Let us start up. We're going to loosen the four screws on the build platform here, on the side here with this Allen wrench. Now, I think initially when they were releasing these, these screws did not have washers in them. So people are having a problem that when they were tightening the screws, um, the build plate would move on them. So with the washers, it would, um, the washers in place, it prevents that, I think. I'm gonna loosen those up. Make sure it's kind of nice and loose. I like to make it real loose, um, just so I know I'm not gonna put any pressure on the screen. So I did that. Uh, and still, okay, now I need to uh, rise the Z axis by 10 millimeters. So we're gonna go to uh, tools, move Z, and then we're gonna go up. Ten millimeters. Okay, that is super quiet, <laughs> super smooth. Okay, we did all that. We're gonna install this, the bill plate. I've already taken the protective cover off. I'm taking the protective cover off of the uh, screen. I'm gonna slide this in. All the way till it goes down flat, like so. Okay. And so I'll secure the printing platform. Place the leveling paper on, paper on the curing screen, click home. So I'm going to put this down, like so. And then we're going to click the home button on the touch screen, home. Okay, it went down, came back up. And now the Z axis is homed. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 
finger press on top of the platform gently to tighten all the four screws. So I'm going to come to the side here so we don't lock anything. All right. And I like to, I like when I do this, I like to put pressure on opposite corners. And I like to just do a lightly tight, a light tighten first right there. And then I'd like to go on the opposite corner and do a light tighten. Like that. And then same thing on the other corners. I'm not cranking down on this. I'm not pushing crazy hard on the build platform. And now that I feel that it's on there, I'm gonna give it one more little tighten. Like that. Like that. Okay. Uh, do that. Alrighty. Click Z zero and confirm to save the zero position. So Z equals zero. Setting zero. Sure, this says on there. So it says zero set up successful rise platform now. So I'm gonna hit enter. And now the platform should raise all the way to the top. Okay. Oh, it didn't go all the way to the top. Okay. Click, uh, now we're gonna, uh, step seven. Click detection on screen and select image and test timing on click. So I wonder why that didn't go all the way up. Enter. Direction or detection. So let's do detection. Please set the exposure time for the test image. And then we're going to hit uh, next. Okay, we're just checking the screen and it looks good. I'd like to get this back up to the top. Move Z, home. Oop, I don't want to do that. I hit home and it was going down. I'm afraid that was going to, I thought home would go up. So I may redo the, da -da -da -da. I'm afraid that I screwed this up. So I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna do this le bed leveling again just to make sure I don't screw this up. <laughs> Last thing I wanna do is crack my screen in the first few seconds of having this thing. So I'm gonna do it again. I thought when I hit home, that this would rise all the way to the top. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this, these steps again. Uh, that, click home. Okay, it's gonna go down. Okay, yeah, we're gonna tighten this up. These don't have to be crazy tight, okay? Click Z equals zero. This is this right here. Enter. Zero set up successful rise platform now, enter, okay? So I don't know why it's going all the way to the top. 
I uh, figured it would go all the way up. So I don't know. And I did this. Next, exposing. And I get the, my screen looks good, it's working. Okay, and so the bed should be level now. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's not going to the top, but I'll figure that out another time. So that's how you level the bed, the, 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 the build platform on this is similar to all the others. Um, it tells me how to install the USB and install the antenna. So the Wi-Fi goes here. And that's one of the crits that I, this, this machine has, has. Why is this Wi-Fi here and why is it in a recessed hole in case you get resin that spills and then you get resin down in there. Um, I won't put the USB stick so I get it downstairs because I don't want to carry around the USB stick sticking out. Um, there is a function in here to have the print pause or stop when the hood comes off. So on the back here, there's a sticker that covers up a sensor that if you take the hood off, the print stops or pauses. I'll probably disable that because I don't care that. The one thing I love about this printer is that I can see the whole process. Uh, on my transform, there's two windows in the doors and you can't see through the doors. They're really, really dark. So I'm constantly having to open the doors to see how the print's doing and that just bumps the printer and that's light and stuff. So I love the fact that I can see all the way around and see the printing process. So I got the bed level. I'm gonna take it downstairs, get it set up uh, next to my other printer and then uh, we'll be back. All right, here's some uh, shots I took of the printer. Here's what you get with all the specs. Again, uh, comes with a lot of cool stuff. Everything you need to get going right away. Here's a close up of all the stuff that comes in there. And then we get the build platform, very nice, solid aluminum build platform, easy to adjust and level, all aluminum vat with FEP installed, Allen wrenches and extra screws, metal and plastic scraper. Here's the metal scraper, which is excellent. Plastic scraper, don't use a whole lot. Then you got the USB stick and Wi-Fi dongle, two screws to hold the vat down, a quick start guide, and then you have the power adapter, power cord, and then the masks and gloves and filters. Here's some the here's the cover, and then here's some 360 photos. The front, uh, again the front again, <laughs> and then we have uh, it's just really nice, solid build, um, all aluminum frame. Here's the side with the power adapter, power switch, back with the fans, other side which just has a label, close up of the power switch, power adapter, and USB port. Shot of the screen. Here are the dual linear rails, which are super solid, um, very stable. Shot of the screen, mono screen, 8.9 inches. Uh, the knob for the vat or for the build plate. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice looking printer. All right, still haven't moved it, but I figure since we're here, we'll go through some of the menu here because I was just kind of messing around and seeing what's in here. So this is your um, home menu, the top wheel settings. So you can adjust the UV power on this, which is pretty cool, 50%. Uh, that's kind of really cool. You can adjust the power setting on that. That's the only setting in there. Uh, what we've got, door detection, disabled, I'm gonna turn that off. It's got sound, print system, uh, let's go back to system, let's go home, tools. Okay, that's where we were. Move Z, detect we did that exposure. Can adjust the exposure here. This is to do a, like a test test exposure next. So that's again testing the screen. That's the whole screen. I have set for ten seconds. Don't know why? We'll turn that. Let that go. Uh, what else we got in here? Detection. We already did that. Exposure. Go back, uh, let's see what's in here with its settings. That's the the, um, the hood lock. Let's go back, print. I don't want to print anything yet, but I choose a file there, which I don't have in yet, system. Language, service, what's service? Okay, it gives you a website, info. Tells you the name of the printer, which uh, version of the firmware you have, ID, IP address. 
It's not hooked up to my Wi-Fi yet, so there's no IP address. Tools, okay, that's where we were before. Okay, so that's the menu. It's pretty simple. Um, so until I start printing, I really can't delve in into this anymore, but there you go. Pretty, pretty simple menu system. Much easier than the frozen transform. The transform is a little weird, but there you go. That's the menu system and that's the home screen. So uh, there you go. So now I'll get this out downstairs and uh, wish it in its, in its new home. Okay, so here we are. So this is where I do my 3D printing. It's out in the garage. Uh, I used to have this set up in my work area, but it's a little on the noisy side. And even though I was using quote unquote less stinky resin, I could still smell it in the house. So I moved down the garage and um, it's just been working much better. So you can see quite a size difference between the, the Mono X and the Transform. <laughs> Um, so again, I'm going to refer to this a lot because this is my first 3D printer ever. This is my second one. So just off the top of my head, I don't know the specs exactly. Uh, I just know that this has a 13.3 inch uh, RGB 4K screen. This has an 8.9 inch 4K mono screen. Uh, I do know that the X and Y, uh, the, uh, the, the print volume on this is, and I'm going to say inches because I'm American, not I'm not going to use a metric, is uh, eight and a half by 11 inches to 15.75 inches tall. So it's got a huge print volume. This one I don't know off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. Um, actually, let me see what. I'm going to cheat and look on my phone. I'll have to give it to you in millimeters because they don't ever give you the specs in inches, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so one second. So this guy, I'll just give you the specs off of Amazon. <laughs> so 5K mono screen, uh, large ability volume, it says upgraded UV light. You can adjust the power of the UV light, which is kind of nice. Uh, three and a half inch touch screen, which is smaller than the transform, but this is much easier to use and much user friendly. It's much easier to understand. Uh, this does have USB Wi-Fi. I tried to, I just tried to download the app, but was unsuccessful. So I'm going to play with that. The Transform has Wi-Fi also. The Wi-Fi dongles in the back. Um, so the one thing I don't like about the Transform that unless you can get this hooked up to your Wi-Fi, you cannot use different resin profiles and so on like that because it doesn't recognize anything you set up in Cheat 2 Box. I use Cheat 2 Box for my slicer. The printer will override that. So I basically, because I can't, my Wi-Fi is not the best out here. I don't use custom resin profiles. I just use the standard uh, default uh, resin profile on this. The only thing I can change on the printer itself is exposure time um, and number of base layers and such like that. I can't control lift speed, retract speed, anything like that. Um, or And I can't even control the resolution, the, y, the Z resolution, it's stuck at 0.05. So that's the only downfall with the Wi-Fi in this. So I did do some testing initially when I first had this at 0.05 and 0.25 and the doubled print time didn't justify the extra print time. So I just point, print everything at 0.5. What I'm looking forward to the AnyCubic Mono X is being able to print at a higher resolution. Basically, if I, if I print at 0.025 or I think I can go down to 0.01, I don't know. Uh, if I, even if I print 0.025, I'm printing at the same speed as this is but I'm getting twice the resolution, twice the Z resolution. So it's kind of a trade off. Um, the print volume on this um, is, do, 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 this is in millimeters, 270 millimeters by 290 millimeters wide by four, uh, hold on, sorry, 270 length. Ah, back up, that's the printer size. <laughs> and that's a huge print volume. Build volume, one, 120, 192 millimeters length. 120 20 millimeters wet width or depth and 250 millimeters high. Um, uses the same resin as this does, five, four, 405 nanometer uh, UV resin. Uh, all these resins are pretty much interchangeable. Um, it's got two fans on the back. I don't know how loud it is. I haven't printed anything yet. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, I put the, U, the USB stick in. If I go to, um, 
Da, 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 da. Go back. I got to print. The file's right there. This is very, this great, one great thing about this is that when I put the USB stick in, it's, in, it's very responsive. It, it recognizes it right away. Again, sometimes in my transform, I have to turn the machine off, put the USB stick in, then turn it back on for it to recognize it. Don't know why. This is the Kickstarter version, so this is like one of the very first ones that came out. Again, I'm just gonna refer to this one a lot. I know they're two different class of printers, so don't get on me about, well, this is a larger printer. Da, da, da. I'm just referring to what I know. I don't have a, a Mars or a, a Mighty 4K to compare to any Cubic 2, so I'm just comparing to what I know and what I've used for the past 18 months. So some things I love about this, some things I don't like, and I think a lot of this, this printer has a lot of things I'm gonna like about it. So the, um, the higher resolution, faster print times, ease of use, and uh, the fact that I put the USB stick in it recognizes it right away. So I think what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna throw some resin in here. I'm gonna just print this test file, which is the AnyCubic Lattice, and uh, we'll see how it goes. The resin I've got is some water washable resin that I've been using lately by 3D Materials. Um, let me get a bottle out for you. I've got some right here. So a lot of guys have been uh, knocking three, uh, water washable, but I've been using this for several months and so far I've loved it. Um, and it's really fast. Even on the RGB screen, my, my, my exposure time on the transform with an RGB screen, on the high side is four and a half seconds. I usually print at four and a half or four seconds. So just to give you a reference, the exposure time that they give you on their chart for this resin for the Mono X at 50% power is 1.06 seconds. So pretty quick, uh, saying 15 seconds for bottom layers and 1.6 seconds for normal layers. So under two seconds, uh, twice as fast as what I'm printing on this right now. If I was to use something like Soraya Tech, um, let's see, uh, the, this, the, this is, doesn't, I don't have, I don't have any Soraya Tech fast with me right now, but like Soraya Tech fast on the transform is usually six and a half seconds is what I expose at on this guy. And I think on this, you can do around two or two and a half seconds. So I'm just gonna throw some resin in. I'm gonna print the pr test file and we'll come back and see what it looks like. No clue, hopefully it works. All right, so the last has been printing for a while. It still has about an hour to go, but it's pretty crazy how, thing, how fast this prints. I mean, this is real time. It goes down and up. So my exposure right now is 1.5 seconds per layer. And I just use all the other default settings, lift, uh, height, lift speed, retract speed, all that stuff is all the default, so I haven't played with those all, but it's pretty well. It's coming out. It's like a adhesion to the bed, and uh, the last is printing. So, there we go. Okay, so the test print is done. I need to figure out why my build play is not going back to the top. So it's something in the setup that I did wrong, but when the print's done, I think it should go all the way to the top. It's not doing that, so I need to figure out and why it's not doing that. I looked through the instructions and nowhere does it tell me, like, send the, nowhere does it say, take the build plate all the way to the top of the printer. So anyway, I'm going to take this out, take a look at it. This took about, uh, just at the default settings, about, I think it was about three and a half hours, something like that. But it printed, um, so I have good adhesion. Let's go ahead and scrape some of this resin off into the vat from the build plate. And then I'll go wash it. You know, use, this is the water washable resin I've been using. I filled it to the max line and it is right to the max as once the build plate goes down. Um, yeah, it's it fills it. All right, so we're going to go watch this, and we'll come back and take a look at it. All right, so I ran out some more prints on the AnyCubic uh, Photon Mono X. This print was uh, six hours and seven minutes, a couple minis from Loot Studios. I ran off a, uh, a bust last night, also uh, a mini, but from a different artist. I'll put all the links, uh, all the, the files down below. So uh, we're going to hit return, and take this off. It looks like I've been printed pretty well. I'll just do a little slideshow and uh, a review of the printed files as I uh, as I pull stuff off the printer. I'll just do it all at once. Uh, but yeah, so this is about uh, again about a six-hour print. 
You can hear my frozen transform printing away next to me. It's fairly loud. One thing about this printer, it's really quiet. Um, for my transform, if I want to check if the thing is still printing, I literally just open my garage door, I can hear it going. This one I can't hear at all. It's really, really quiet. Um, I am going to try some prints. Um, I want to try some, I want to try, uh, maybe I'll get two kind of really small pieces. So I want to try one at the 0 0.05 setting, and then I want to try one at 0 0.01 and see what kind of results I get. So I'll pick out a, a mini, I'm not a mini painter. So these are actually for a friend of mine. Um, and these were scaled up a little bit um, by 20%. So these are printed at 120%, not 100%. But it uh, looks like everything printed very, very, really well. So I'll take these off. And I. so what I've been doing, I've been just taking the whole bill plate and throwing it and just washing the whole, this is water washable. You're just washing the whole thing at one time. It's really easy, it's small to handle. I like the transformer. I need both hands to really handle the bill It's so dang big. Um, but so far, the plug and play of this thing is super easy. I literally, I, I set it up and I've been printing successfully since I first started playing with this thing uh, less than 24 hours ago. So uh, initially, my review is that it's a really easy printer to use. Um, so, so far, no complaints. So we'll just keep on printing and then we'll do a, a review of all the stuff I printed at the end. Okay, so after printing for an entire week with the Anycubic Photon Mono X, I'm ready to kind of give my feedback and my thoughts on this printer. All the prints were used, printed using the 3D Materials Gray Water Washable Resin. Started using this a little while ago after the Soraya Tech price increased by 30%. So I bought a couple of bottles of this off of Amazon. Um, it's about 30 bucks a kilo kilogram. Gave it a shot. And so far it's been excellent print. It's been excellent resin. Um, it's super fast. So this is a little plug for this resin too. It's super fast. On my uh, Frozen Transform, which is an RGB screen, my normal exposure time is four and a half seconds. I could probably go down to four, but I do at four and a half. On the Indycubic Photon Mono X, my exposure is 1.3 seconds on this stuff. So even on an RGB screen, this is really fast resin. So give it a shot. I'll put a link down below to where to get it. Um, it is water washable, so you have to be sure you really wash it out really, really well and make sure you cure the inside of your prints. I've seen a lot of stuff about cracking prints. Um, I've had, when I first started printing, I even had prints that I printed in Soraya Tech fast crack because I didn't know you had to cure the inside of the prints. So anyway, enough of that. So here's all the prints I did uh, on the Photon Mono X. And these are all for a buddy of mine. But... Um, yeah, I put a lot of resin through this thing the past week. Probably at least three kilograms and maybe more. Um, so it doesn't look like I print a lot, but some of these are solid. So that's why I went through so much resin. Um, I've only had, only had one failure, and it was because I forgotten to tighten down the build plate before I started the print. So I had a pancake, which means it all just cured to the FEP. But other than that, everything printed flawlessly. No issues whatsoever. Mine worked straight out of the box. Um, I know some people had... Warped build plates. Uh, mine wasn't warped. I didn't have to sand or anything. I put it in there, started printing, and have been printing nonstop for a week. So let's go over some specs of the printer. So as before, it's the Anycubic Photon Mono X. It's a mid-size mono screen printer. It has an 8.9 inch mono screen 4K screen on it. Uh, the build volume is 192 mil, uh, millimeters long by 120 millimeters wide by 245 millimeters high. Uh, so it's got one advantage over the, um, the Elegoo Saturn is that the Z axis is about two inches taller, same size screen length and width wise, but you get a little more height on the Z axis. Um, X, Y resolution is 50, uh, 0 0.05, uh, millimeters. So it's pretty, pretty fine. The only printer you'll find out in the market right now that has a finer X, Y resolution will be the, uh, frozen Sonic mini 4k. And I think it has an X, Y resolution of 0 0.037. But it's a 4K monitor, 4K screen in a, in a smaller dimension, so it squeezes the pixel, so that's why. Anytime you have a 4K screen and you start making the screen bigger, you're going to lose XY resolution. Uh, like on the Frozen Transform, the XY resolution, I think, is 0.072 or 73, something like that. So the XY resolution isn't as fine as on the Anycubic Photon Mono X. So I'll be referring to the uh, Frozen Transform quite a bit because it's the only other printer I've ever printed on. 
I know it's not in the same build volume class, but um, just based on my experience with the two printers, I can give you some hits and misses between the two. Overall, I'm extremely happy with this printer. Like I said, it worked right out of the gate. Uh, I didn't have any issues printing. Um, no failures except for one due to user error. And um, let's see if we can get this guy to focus. And uh, the details on these prints are pretty, pretty damn sharp. So I'll go over all the prints. I'll tell you which uh, artist, where I printed them from, how long it took me to print them, and all that fun stuff. Um, what else over the... So the, also another spec for the printer is that you can print down to 0 0.01 millimeters. I did try that on, one, on a file and it was a miserable result. And I think it's a, I think it's a uh, limitation of the resin. I don't think it's meant to go down that low. Um, but the Z resolution, you can print from 0 0 0.01 millimeters to 0.15 millimeters. Uh, so those are, that's the, the, the print envelope on the Z axis for this printer. Uh, the light source is a UV matrix, meaning it has an array of UV lights instead of just one, so you get more even um, light distribution over your exposure, which is plus. The Frozen Transform has that too, um, just as a plug. So the printer retails on their website for about $700. You can get it on Amazon a little cheaper if you look around. I think there's a coupon floating around right now for like $100 off. So you can get it for between six and $800, depending on where you buy it. So just do some research and find out. Um, where you can get the best deal on it. I don't have any affi any affiliate links or anything like that, so I'll just put a plug. I'll just put a link down to the AnyCubic Photon or the AnyCubic website, so you can check it out. So uh, let's look at some of these prints. So the first, I'm going to go left to right, and the first prints I'm going to look at uh, were downloaded and printed from my mini factory, and this is from an uh, artist called Alexi Konev. Put a link down to his page down there. He's got some amazing, amazing sculpts. And again, all these prints were for a buddy of mine. So, and I'll tell you how big I printed them and how long they took approximately. So this first print, he's got a lot of stuff that's kind of like Warhammer, uh, kind of inspired stuff. I'm not gonna say that it is Warhammer because that's all, of course, uh, proprietary and copyrighted. So this first file, and I'm gonna probably butcher some of these names. First one is called uh, Gobert Rillman. And I, I uh, blew this guy up to 100, uh, I printed him at 175%. So I have another file here that's printed at 100%. So I'll do a side by side here in a second. So some of his files come cut, some of them they don't come cut. This one was one of the files that came in pieces. So I was able to maximize the build plat platform of the AnyCubic Photon Mono X. Um, so I did two prints for this guy. The first print I did, I did three heads and a base. So the reason I did th two of these guys is I printed these hollow and because uh, my buddy wants to try lighting one of them up. So I, I printed two. So I printed them on hollow. You can see my supports there. Um, on this I used, I think, medium support settings. Um, and the settings I use are just from a friend of mine who gave them to me years ago or about a year ago. Um, and they work really well. But I'm not sure this lens will focus as close. But I think you can see here that the details are pretty damn sharp. Um, as far as like any layer lines, you do see them every once in a while, depending on how you look at them in the light. Uh, there is a nice, there is a difference, a higher quality than on my frozen transform as far as layer lines. Cause if they are there, they're finer. They're not as, um, uh, defined. Everything was pointed at 0 0.05 millimeters, unless I tell you differently, which will be on these three uh, test files up here. I show you later. Um, but see here, are the two, uh, helmeted heads and here's the, the human head. But yeah, looking really, really good. Picked up all the details in the leaves on the on his uh, crown there, all the wrinkles. There's some dust and stuff on here. Um, if you see some white stuff, that's just for me putting the heads on the on the torso. But it's a tight fit. So there's the heads. So the the one print was the heads and the base, and the base turned out nice. You can see a, a slight line there, and that's probably from when I added more resin to the reservoir. Uh, the reservoir is aluminum, and it holds about 500 milliliters or 500. Uh, yeah, 500 milliliters of resin. So um, <clears throat> I have seen people ask if there's ways to expand the capacity of the of the, of the uh, vat, um, and I don't know. Maybe you can like do something. Um, uh, it would be nice if it held more resin. Like if they can make it really tall and hold a whole kilogram of resin, that'd be amazing. Uh, the build platform is aluminum. It's got a slanted side. The one thing I would be I would love to see in combination of is that the frozen transform build floor, the one I have, 
is flat but it has holes in it and I love that because all the resin drains through the holes. So a combination of maybe the tapered uh, build platform with holes in it would be a great, great uh, design choice. So anyway, back to this print. So there are the heads, there's the base. And then here is the uh, star of the show of this print is the upper torso and the shoulders. This turned out amazing. Um, I printed it to hollow, so I put a bunch of holes. I can't. I think this. I think I hollowed this myself and added the supports myself. A lot of his files come pre-supported, um, but I think I did the supports on this myself, and they actually turned out better. Um, I think sometimes these pre-supported files come over-supported, so I did. I usually do auto supports, and I'll go in there and edit. But uh, this turned out amazing. I mean, the details on this are pretty damn sharp. I don't think you can deny that this printer picks up the details really well, especially like in here on the skull. And as I turn this around, um, hopefully this is in focus, it's really hard to see any of the layer lines. Where you start to see it, <clears throat> and it's like within my frozen transform also, is on flat surfaces, is where you really kind of start to notice any kind of print artifacts or layer lines. And that's, every, all the prints I've seen off of printers like these, these DLP printers, that's where you're gonna see any kind of print artifacts on large flat surfaces. And that's where your orientation comes into play. This guy was just printed straight 90 degrees off the build platform. I didn't or angle him or anything. Uh, typically when I have a piece that's got a lot of f f facets or angles to it, I don't tilt it. I just print it 90 degrees because it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is a great, the rope detail is super sharp. Really nice. Um, so print time. So the shoulders took about um, seven and a half hours to print. And then the base and the heads took about seven hours too. So about 15 hours altogether in two prints for this guy off the off the Inacubic Photon Mono X. But great print. Um, really nice. So the next is by the same artist, Alexi Konev. And this guy is called, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, is is right I can't even say it I'll put the link down below <laughs> it's spelled s i s c a r i o t so I don't even know how I'll put a little thing above now you see some white residue every once in a while I think it's just for me not washing it well enough but this was uh this is printed solid so this took a good chunk of resin even though it's small this is what if you look at the size comparison this is at a hundred percent right here this is at hundred at 175 percent so quite a size difference um they probably took about the same amount of resin because this one is solid and this one was pre-supported which if i had the choice i wish this was broken up into pieces i would have done my own supports because um this part uh just wasn't very flat and i think it's because again using the pre-supports i think they're over supported but um great sculpt i had a few pieces break off just from me cleaning the print there's a little thing that dangles here and a little piece that hangs there i'll those in the box for my friend to glue back on but everything printed beautifully these little spikes are sharp as needles printed perfectly um all the details in the fur back here of this like whatever this animal he's got over his shoulders the skulls with the little ropes on their head just really really nice so um Again, I got some white residue, and I, I, it's like a powder. I've, I've even gone over this with the IPA, and it's, it still comes back. I'm not sure what it is. This is the worst one for some reason. It's doing that, uh, but really nice, really nice print, nice sculpt. Um, print time on this was about seven hours. Yeah. So basically, anything that's about six inches tall is about six hours. Again, my exposure time was 1.3 seconds per layer. Uh, I think my bottom layer exposure is. 15 seconds with this resin with six bottom layers and then all the default lift speeds and retract speeds. I didn't change any of that. I didn't do zoom settings or anything like that. All right, so the next files we're gonna look at are from Loot Studios. This first one was the last print I just did last night and this lady is called the Anus Hag and she's a boss. I scaled her, all these uh, Loot Studios files, at least these three figures, were scaled up 120 to 120%. So uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful print. Um, I didn't use, this is solid too, so it took a good chunk of resin. I don't like doing these little ones in hollow because I want to put, when I want to do something like this, I want to put big enough holes in it that I can drain the resin and put LEDs in. 
and I use pretty good size LEDs to drain the inside of, to cure the inside of my prints, but I don't want to put big holes in these guys. So I'd rather just print them solid. It's got a nice weight to it. Um, here's her base. Um, the wood detail is perfect. There's still some supports in there my buddy will have to take out. And uh, this was a great print. This print was, how long was this one? This was about an eight hour print. Um, I was able to barely fit both of these on the bill plate. So I did these in one print. It's barely fit. Uh, but great details in the in her clothes here, the skull and the sack. Her belt, these skulls printed beautifully. It's a really, really nice job. So that's the anus hag. I'm gonna put her to the side. Now these two are also from Loot Studios. This one is called Green Hag. I'll put this lady in the back. Now these were scaled up the same size. This uh, anus hag just has a bigger base for some reason. Um, and I got some blue tack down here because she wants. She's very back heavy. She wants to fall backwards. But again, this these took. Um, I was able to print both of these at the same time on one build platform. So I maxed it out, and together these printed uh, took about again seven and a half eight hours somewhere in there. Um, I have not I have not maxed out the Z axis on anything. I've just basically mixed max, maxed out the X and Y axis on this guy. But great detail. The weaving in the basket turned out. All the fruit and vegetables in her basket turned out nice. Uh, again, there's some shiny spots. She's not sticky, um, but um, great detail. And these were these, uh, these were printed solid again and I just used the pre-supported files um, so Loot Studios has some amazing figures I'm not a minifigure guy so the, again we scaled these up these are the 75 millimeter version that's both all the hat all the hags are the 75 millimeter version scaled up 120 to 120 percent so scaled up by 20 percent um, so yeah really nice everything printed beautifully on these um, again nothing failed I'm not seeing any really noticeable print lines or anything like that no layer shifts so uh great job on this she may i'm gonna lay her down because she, she may want to fall over all right so this is the night hag and this one was crazed again pre-supported printed solid and um for some reason the details on this one's a little softer and i think it's the sculpts so i'm not sure if they're using a different sculptor but um yeah, I'm not a real fan of this sculpt particularly, but uh, she printed nice. Everything turned out well. Again, I printed at the same time as the green hag, but uh, everything was rendered beautifully. The supports on this, I think, were way overkill. It took me for I had to, it took me like 30 minutes to get the supports off of this. Um, so sometimes it's better just to support things yourself. <laughs> but overall, those pre-supported files have been working really well. Uh, but yeah, but nice print. So let's put all those hags to the side. And we're bringing out the last two files from Loot Studios. And these are two busts I did. And there's bases. Um, so this first bus is uh, Banzan Hill. And he's like a monk guy. And again, really, really nice. Again, pre-supported, hollow print. Um, yeah, uh, more of a critique of the, of the, of the file itself. Is that some of the supports are really, really close to the chest? So like one got fused to his to his chest here, so that's a little spot that's got to be fixed. Um, but again, not seeing any layer shifts. All the details are rendered really, really nice. Um, even on the back here, where it's flat, you're not seeing any like layer lines or anything like that. Sometimes you see these kind of little swirly patterns in these uh, DLP printers, but really not seeing it here um that may change when you throw a light coat of primer you may see some of that but for the most part really really nice uh they both have a i was able to print both these on the same print uh this was about a four hour print a little shorter so the one thing is that these stands don't fit so i'm not sure why they don't fit they don't fit on either of them it's just really tight so my buddy will have to sand these down or make his own bases for some i don't know why they don't fit they just don't um so that's Banzan Hill, and this is Enna. She's kind of like a fairy lady with a bird. Again, great print. This is the pre-supported file, hollow print. Um, yeah, really nice. Again, my friend's got to do some cleanup here. He's got all the hard work, really. He's got to go clean up all the, do all the post-production on these. But the hair was rented beautifully. Um, 
I might be seeing one, yeah, I see one little kind of like line right here, so I'm not sure what happened there. But it's only on that side. So usually, usually when you see a line, it's across the whole file. Um, and it's usually in a very wide part of the print, like where there's a large cross section where you may have some uh, a peel force or suction that has, a, has an issue. But all the details in this are rendered beautifully. Like there's a lot of really fine texture in her cloth here. The scroll work is perfectly done. The fabric texture is really nice. Uh, she's got like this kind of wood thing going on her sh shoulder shift for shoulder pads. Just the details are really, really nice. So that's all the prints for that kind of stuff. And I did one kind of test run of this bust called the Reconnect Bust. And I wanted to test three different resolutions. So I printed uh, one at 0.05, one at 0.025, and one at 0.1. And the best one is the 0.05. Um, and again, this could be a limitation of the resin, so I'm just, but this is what I found. So the 0 0.05, which is this lady right here, uh, printed the sharpest. Um, least amount of artifacting, anything like that. And it was about a two and a half hour print. She's short, you know, probably, I don't know, two and a half inches tall. This is at 100%. So not scaled up or scaled down. But everything uh, printed beautifully. Um, real nice. Again, these are printed solid. But there's a lot of kind of mechanical details down here. Those printed perfectly. And so on. So here's the point zero two five. This is This is the worst out of all. And this could be like a mathematical thing. Like, I'm not sure if doing like... Increments of point, uh, point 0.5 are is advisable or just both, you know, around the 10, but this one is terrible. A lot of lines, a lot of artifacting, and again, it's probably just a, um, uh, are probably part of the resin and the fact that I did a 0 0.025 instead of like a 0 0.03 or something like that. But this was like you know, almost a six hour print, so more than double the time, not as good results. And then the point zero 0.01. Again, this was a 14 hour print. So we go from roughly two and a half hours to 14 hours. And again, this could be a result of the resin not being able to print that low, but this was not as good either. Um, I'm getting some, some lines in here. I did reduce my exposure time. So let's go back. So the exposure time on this was 1.3 seconds on the 0 0.05. I, did, I kept the same exposure for this one, 1.3 seconds at 0 0.025. And I saw the, the Kind of the effect it had so i did lower my exposure on this to one second and even then um it may be a little overexposed but i'm still seeing some print artifacts and some lines and stuff so um depending on the resin and what you're printing 0 0.05 and i think most guys will agree that that's like the sweet spot for printing but uh yeah so there you go so that's all my printing so final thoughts on this printer i think overall it's an excellent printer the only crit I have, and this is just me because I'm not a fan of it, I don't like the lid. I wish there was a door on it. Um, I do like that I can see through the lid and see my print. On my transform, I have to open the doors to see the print progress um, because the plexiglass is too dark. Um, I think it's super easy to use. Mine worked right out of the box. Um, really easy. The print times are really nice. The details are crisp and sharp. It's built like a tank. It's very well built. Um, it's, it's a heavy, it's a heavy machine for the size of it. it works perfectly with Chitu box. Um, that's the slicer I use. I haven't tried lychee slicer or any of those, but I've just been using Chitu box. It works pretty good. Uh, the fact that the power outlet is on the side as well as the USB ports on the side. One thing I wish it had, I wish it had some onboard storage. Um, that way you're not printing directly off the, uh, USB stick all the time. My transform has onboard storage where you put the USB stick, you load the files onto the printer and then you print from the from the printer itself. So maybe they uh, do something later with another printer where there's some onboard storage so you can download the files to the printer and that way you can be working on other files and using the USB stick. So I already lost one use USB stick. <laughs> now you kind of use the same one for each printer. Um, so you could you know, download them to the printer and be working on files and uh, putting them on the USB stick while it's printing. Uh, what else? It's super quiet. Like I can't tell it's printing unless I go look at it. <laughs> My transform sounds like a jet airplane flying through the garage. Um, easy control. The menus are super easy to read and use. Um, I was able to, you can go in there and manually adjust things, um, on the menu as it's printing or before it's printing. Um, the app, I was unable to get the app to download on my phone. I, I'll try again later, but from what I've seen, it's really not that uh, user 
it's really not there's really no purpose to it right now so um, from what I've read from other reviews uh, let's see what else that's really about it so I do um, I highly recommend this printer if you're looking for a mid-size printer your other option would be the Elegoo uh, Saturn um, which has the same size screen so you have the same XY resolution but you lose about two inches on the Z, Z axis um, again this is only the second printer I've ever used I've never done FDM or anything I started with the frozen transform and uh, learned on that and then uh, when they asked me if I'd review this one I said yeah sure why not and um, been super happy with it so uh, I've been printing a lot this week um, like I said I've probably run at least three kilograms of resin through the anticubic if not more um, just because some of these are, are solid. And they, solid. It's amazing how much resin a solid print takes over a hollow print. It's like it exponentially increases. Um, what else? Um, I think that's it. I, you know, I think it's a great printer. If you're looking for a mid-sized printer um, with the kind of build volume that this has, <clears throat> mono screen's great because it's going to last longer than an RGB screen. So RGB screens are rated to last for about four or 500 hours. I will tell you that my frozen transform it probably has double that right now at least it probably has at least 800 hours on it still going strong um uh, the mono screens are rated to last for i think like 2000 hours um so not sure if that's based on how often you use it how often it heats up and stuff but my rgb screen on my transform has been going for 18 months um and it's probably it's got at least 800 hours on it i wish there was a way you could check to see on both printers how many hours you have on the monitor or on the screen so you can see when it dies how much time they get out of it I don't think neither of those printers have that capability I think that'd be something nice to have um, I'm just showing this print off because I love I think this print is perfect this is such a beautiful print I love it it's <laughs> I mean that oh, let let's put a head on it let's put a head on it so, it's, so you get some context this guy's got switchable heads um, but I think this is out of the so far the photon mono X this print and the anus hag are probably the two nicest out of the prints that I got. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the sculpt, to be honest. Um, I think they're just really great sculpts. So that makes a huge difference. So yeah, that's my review. Um, check it out, you know, if you wanna get one. Again, I don't have any affiliate links, so it doesn't matter where you, if you buy it from Amazon or any, I don't get anything from it. I, um, just, um, you know, check it out. There's a bunch of reviews on it. Uncle Jesse has a great review on it. Um, 3D Print Farm. There's a bunch of guys that have reviews on this printer, so uh, go check out their reviews too if you want a little more higher video production quality, as my video production quality is never the greatest, but um, hopefully it's informative and you get something out of it. But there you go. So check out Anycubic. Um, check out their website. Check them out on Amazon. But uh, yeah, highly recommend this printer for anyone looking to get a mid-sized printer or even start and you have the budget for you know, a $700 printer or something like that, you know. Um, some of the minis just are a little too small. Like, I wouldn't be able to print this guy at this size on a on a, on a frozen uh, mini 4K. It's too wide. Um, it only has, like, a 6-inch screen. But I could print some of this other stuff on it, no problem. But there you go. Highly recommend it. Pick one up. Also, check out the 3D Materials Gray uh, Water Washable Resin. I'll put a link to that on Amazon. Again, it's not an affiliate link. Um, just check it out, buy a bottle, and see if you like it. But as always, thanks for watching. This is Matt Morozik, and uh, catch you guys next time. Bye.